I want to welcome uh, Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland to the show. He's the top Democrat on the House Oversight Committee in 2021. He served as the lead House manager prosecuting the second impeachment case against Donald Trump. He was a member of the January 6th committee that investigated the attack on the Capitol. And, and Congressman, I, I didn't realize it was Maryland morning for us here, but, you know, why not? That's a good theme to have uh, on a Sunday morning on Velshi. Um, Congressman, you are... You are one of the loudest and clearest and most articulated, uh, articulate voices on the threat to democracy that Donald Trump and people like him, it's not just Donald Trump, uh, are, are posing to America. Since you and I have been talking in, in all these years, things have escalated so much to the point that Donald Trump now says all the quiet parts out loud. So I, I want to get your thoughts about where we are uh, in the threat to democracy that we face as Americans uh, going into 2024. Well, we're in the fight of our lives, Ali. I mean, uh, every four years, the Democrats come back and say, this is the most important election of our lifetimes. Forget all that. This one really is the most important election of our lifetimes. This is our year of living dangerously and our year of living passionately in defense of constitutional democracy. Donald Trump has made it clear he's in league with every dictator, autocrat, kleptocrat, plutocrat, theocrat on earth, and they're all in league against American democracy. He made clear he wanted to topple it on January 6, 2021, when he levied an insurrection, a violent insurrection against the union and tried to overthrow the constitutional order and install himself as president. He's continued to say he will pardon everybody who was involved in that attack on our democracy. And that's uh, very much a pattern with the authoritarians. And, you know, the, the part of the conversation that has not yet been elaborated is really about anti-Semitism. There's a national uproar over anti-Semitism. Somebody like Elise Stefanik has no problem going after Ivy League presidents. What about Donald Trump, who dines with Nicholas Fuentes, who is an unreconstructed Holocaust revisionist neo-Nazi, uh, who says that Jews don't belong in Western civilization? Uh, you know, where is Elise Stefanik on that point? Right. Uh, Donald Trump was the one who saw, you know, uh, very fine people on both sides of uh -huh. an anti-Semitic riot uh, in the Unite uh, the Right festivities called by neo-Nazi groups in Charlottesville in 2017. So if we're going to have a conversation about anti-Semitism, let's talk about real anti-Semitism in the Republican Party today and why Donald Trump, who traffics in anti-Semitic tropes, as he did in 2016, when he ran against Lloyd Blankfein, Janet Yellen, and George Soros, saying that right. these globalists were not on the side of American people. Like, when are we going to have the conversation about that? Yep. Uh, globalists, uh, as, as you and I know, is code, right? Uh, Breitbart uses it. They put a little globe next to it. Globalist means Jewish. Um, it, it is interesting, because you go back to when, Donald, when, when Joe Biden announced his run for presidency, and it was actually for the soul of the nation. His opening campaign uh, ad was about Charlottesville. This is actually a fight that's been going on for a long time. That's the bad part, right, that we've got in intellectual inconsistency on the part of, of Republicans and right-wingers on this. On the other side of things, the, the, the hopeful part is what we've seen in special elections, off-year elections, midterm elections, uh, the fights against Moms for Liberty, the fights, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the referendum in Ohio. People, Americans, are listening to this. They are saying, if this is the fight of our, our lives in terms of democracy, I can have a role. I can change all this nonsense. Well, look, the, the commanding Democratic uh, majority in the country just needs opportunities to have its will to be expressed, as you point out, with Missouri, Kansas, Ohio, Colorado. The vast majority of the American people reject Trump and Trumpism. Joe Biden beat him by more than 7 million votes last time, and we're adding millions of young voters to the rolls between 20 and 20 and 24. Uh, so... What do they have on their side? A bag of tricks, anti-democratic tricks, manipulation of the Electoral College, gerrymandering of federal and state legislative districts, right-wing judicial activism, not allowing, you know, my constituent Merrick Garland even to get a hearing when he was nominated to the Supreme Court. It's all anti-democratic, anti-constitutional offensives that the Republicans rely on, and they're willing to go all the way to violence, as we saw on January 6th. But the good news, as you say, is that the Democratic majority in the country is standing tough and standing strong, and we just need to make sure that millions of young people are part of that coalition, which is why it's so important that Joe Biden get us on a path 
towards peace, towards neutralization of Hamas and disarming them from control over uh, Gaza, and then moving us towards real peace and reconstruction in the Middle East for Israelis and for Palestinians. Uh, tell me about that a little bit, uh, because I, I, I like to have that conversation about what it looks like next, and it's a very hard conversation to have right now because, because understandably, so many people here and there are in the moment about what's going on, uh, whether it's the tragedy in Gaza or the fact that there are still 137 hostages uh, who have not been released. Um, it is imperative to think about what the future looks like. What are your thoughts? Well, th that's exactly right. Uh, what we need from the Biden administration is uh, setting forth a plan to move forward on the day after the hostilities end, and that day cannot come too soon uh, from the standpoint of uh, the preservation of civilian life yep. and community in Gaza uh, and in Israel. So um, what we need is an elucidation of a real plan for a two-state solution for a democratic Palestinian state existing next to a democratic Israeli state in security with safe borders all around and an international plan, a Marshall Plan style investment in the region to rebuild and reconstruct because either the Middle East is going to lead to greater regional war in World War III or it can be an opportunity for the world to get invested in peace and reconstruction and human rights so we can get back to work on the overarching challenge of our time, which is climate change, which threatens the lives of everybody and threatens the future of humanity. I want to get back to this topic you raised a few minutes ago. The, the uh, president of the University of Pennsylvania uh, stepped down from her position last night. The board, of, uh, the, the board chair stepped down. Uh, the pressure has now moved to the presidents of uh, Harvard and ultimately MIT, and we may see, we may see their removal or their resignation in the next couple of days. Um, tell me about your thoughts on this, because I, I'm always, you, you are a very intellectually consistent guy. How should we be thinking about this? Well, I'm thinking about it as a father, as a parent. I mean, if, my kids have been sent to college at great expense, uh, like, uh, you know, millions of people across the country. I want to know that if somebody is actually calling for the genocide of the Jews or anybody else on campus, that we've got a college president who will say, quickly get campus police over there. That person could be a danger to other people around them, especially in the age of the AR-15, when we've had, you know, uh, genocidal style uh, language being used, but also uh, massacres taking place, like at the Tree of Life uh, Synagogue um, in uh, Pittsburgh or at the Buffalo supermarket. Those are right-wing anti-Semites who talk about the great replacement theory. We had a guy at Cornell uh, who was making death threats towards Jews, and we had three Palestinian uh, college kids who were shot in Burlington, Vermont, of all places. So. You know, with lax Republican gun laws across the country, we've got to take very seriously anybody who's making any kind of violent threats, especially genocidal threats. Having said that, uh, where does Elise Stefanik get off lecturing anybody about anti-Semitism when she's the hugest supporter of Donald Trump, who traffics in anti-Semitism all the time? She didn't utter a peep of protest when he had Kanye West and Nick Fuentes over for dinner. Nick Fuentes, who doubts whether October 7th even took place because he thinks it was some kind of suspicious propaganda move by the Israelis. And the Republican Party is filled with people who are entangled with anti-Semitism like that. And yet somehow she gets on her high horse and lectures a Jewish college president from MIT.